Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we are looking at this ink. This is a little sample vial of Meet Me in St. Louis by KWZ. This is going to be uh, an ink that was made for the St. Louis Pen Show, which is coming up this weekend. If you are anywhere around St. Louis, I would say go check that out. It is the first St. Louis Pen Show, and uh, I hope it's a great one. I really want more pen shows to be around, and this seems like it's a cool place. I've never been to St. Louis. Here's some St. Louis... Uh, uh, meet me in St. Louis blues on my fingers. I was messing around with the pins today and got some all over my hands and stuff like that. So um, this is what it looks like on skin. Now, if you don't write on skin and you generally write on paper, let's go ahead and look at it on some paper. Uh, by the way, this sample was sent out to me by Ken, who is uh, one of the organizers of the show. So that's fun. Uh, here is the ink on some paper. This is, of course, a Rhodia dot pad paper, and you can see it's kind of a tealy blue here, uh, and that I use two very different sizes of nibs to... Uh, uh, to play with this ink. The first is in this pen. This is a Levenger l -Tech, and it has a big broad nib on it. It's very wet as a, as a pen, uh, and I think this ink is actually a little bit on the wet side too. Not like a super gusher or anything like that, but certainly not stingy. So, a little bit wet on this one. The other pen is this, which is a, uh, a Franklin Christoph Model 2 that uh, is Audrey's. And this has a gold nib on it. This is sort of a, I think this is just sort of an experimental nib that uh, they were working on. This is like a, a medium sig, maybe a fine sig somewhere in there. But as you can see here, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot thinner. The ink comes out a lot lighter because there's much less being put down. It's not nearly as wet. Audrey has this one too, a little bit dry, I think. Uh, so there you go. We got uh, two very different kinds of pens going on. You can see a massive difference here in the sort of uh, writing that you get. I'm zoom in a little bit more. Nope, can't really get any closer or my focus dies. So uh, I'm just going to take my word for it. It looks a little bit more green, a little more tealy on this uh, uh, this very small uh, sort of dry nib. Very, very small compared to this broad. This is more what I usually write with uh, than this. So uh, as I say here, uh, this one is kind of a blue. and It's got a little bit of green in it, so it makes it a little bit tealy. Um, it doesn't really have any problems. There's a little bit of a mild bleed on the 20 pound, as we'll see here in just a sec. Uh, there's a little bit of shading, a little bit of sheen going on, but not a whole lot of either, really. It's a pretty, um, pretty nice saturated ink without a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. So no matter what kind of thing you're into in an ink, this will probably scratch that itch. If you like a nice plain saturated ink, it's got that. If you like some sheen, it's got a little bit of that if you put down enough. If you like some shading, it's got a little bit of that, especially if you use it in a slightly drier nib. Uh, out of this br big broad nib, there's not a whole lot of shading to be found just because it's putting down so much ink all the time. Let's go ahead and look at it on the copy paper and then a couple other papers as for, as per usual. Here it is on the copy paper. I can't actually fit it all on the screen. There we go. Uh, and as you can see, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of feather down in here, I think, uh, from the, the very finer, the much finer nib, uh, but nothing terrible up here. There's a couple little feathers and that sort of thing. I'm thinking that this sheet of copy paper is actually um, crappier than usual because it does seem to bleed more with more pens than I was expecting. But um, you will see a little bit of that on the back here. It's these two lines. Uh, and from the broad nib, you do get the occasional bleed. From the small one, you get a couple of dots here and there, but nothing big, uh, no big deal. So if you have a nib somewhere in between these two, I think it'll be just fine. Or if you keep it on better paper, uh, that's, uh, that's a thing you can also do. All right, so that's the 20 pounds. Get that out of here. Terrible office quality uh, cheapo paper that uh, people buy just because it's cheap. All right, so here it is on a, uh, an ink journal from Tomoe, or a, a Tomoe River ink journal. Uh, and here it is down at the bottom. And you see it's got some, uh, some very nice color, color characteristics here on this Tomoe River. I'm a big fan of it on here. This might be one of those inks that just looks a lot better on Tomoe River than uh, elsewhere. And then here's the next page. This is from the much finer nib. And you can see it's a whole different color profile. I wish I could put these two next to each other on this Tomoe River, but I kind of can't. So look there. And then remember this. So uh, it comes out a little bit greener, a little bit um, more tealish uh, from the smaller nib. But uh, that's what it looks like on the other paper, too. So I'm not terribly surprised. All right, now this one will be side by side. This is from an Inky Fingers Currently Inked Notebook. And this uses wheat straw paper. And here it is on those two, from those two pens. And as you can see, I haven't actually been using it all that long. This is not an ink that I have put through the ringer, so to speak. It's one that I've only had for 
uh, what is today? The sixth. So I don't know, about a week or so. Um, I just got this in the mail not too long ago and got it in some pens. So uh, I've only been using it for a little while and I just inked this one up. So I haven't used it a whole lot, but uh, I think we can still show you what it looks like for sure. Uh, but it's interesting how inks take on an entirely different character depending on the sort of nib you've got it in. So if you've got an ink and you don't think you like it, try a different pen, see how it goes. Or if you have an ink in a particular pen, and you're like, oh, I don't like this. Put another pen, see how that goes. So there you go. All right. Uh, let's do the water test, look at the chromatography, and then look at a whole bunch of comparisons, uh, and then get out of here. That's my plan. Okay, so here we have our water test area. We have our handy dandy syringe full of water. Let's go ahead and put some water on there. Yeah, it seems like a good amount. Let it sit for a sec. Soak in some. And that's probably long enough. Let's go ahead and mop this up. Uh, there we go. Shoop. Nice. It's actually still coming through here. Rhodia paper is some really solid paper. As much as, as much water as I put on this stuff, I'm always surprised when it doesn't go through the page. But as you can see on the other side, a little bit wrinkly because it soaked up a little bit of water, but definitely nothing on the next page. So good job, Rhodia. Uh, this, this ink is not particularly water resistant. Uh, you'll probably be able to read it sort of after it uh, dries. It'll usually darken out a little bit as it dries. Uh, but yeah, not water resistant. Keep this away. Uh, this is, I guess, from the blues. Uh, don't let your tears from the blues get on your writing because it will wash it straight away. And here is the chromatography. Uh, there we go. Now, I didn't uh, I didn't film this one in time lapse. I just didn't have the, the time or setup, but uh, it started out right about here. I'm going to have to start putting a little pencil line if I do this. Uh, but nothing stuck around. Everything moved up the sheet. This blue at the top is absolutely gorgeous. I want that blue. But you also get some like some greens and some more murky sort of colors down here. Uh, but here you can see the slightly darker line. That is all that's left of where the sink started. So no, no water resistance. Don't uh, don't get this one wet. All right, let's look at it next to a bunch of other inks. Uh, here it is on a, uh, a word card. Not a word card, a uh, Colodex card. And here's where you can see some of that sheen. A little bit. A little bit of like a purplish sheen there around the edges of the very dark bit. Not a ton though. You're not going to find a lot of sheen in this ink. Here is uh, Robert Oster's Lake of Fire, which is I think more blue and a little bit sheenier, but Lake of Fire doesn't really have that much sheen going on. It's not one of these super sheener inks as far as I can tell. Uh, I haven't really used it much, but that's what I got for you so far. And then this is uh, Sailor's Yamadori, which is more of a like a tarnished coppery sort of look is what that's going for. It's definitely more green than either of these. As you can see, this one's straight up blue. This one's leaning a little bit greener. And then this one is uh, quite green when you get right down to it. All right. And then here we have uh, Roaring Cleaner Sketch Ink. This is Frida, which is a pigment ink. So a little bit different kind of composition there. And then uh, Diatromentis' Indigo Blue, which again, um, lets you see how much different this is than just a straight up blue uh, when you put it next to one of these. And then this one's kind of a blue-black Frida is, but uh, I wanted to show some kind of blue-black next to it because this isn't a blue-black either. It's a very interesting color and not one I had like an exact match for in my collection here. And I've got Diamine's uh, Music Collection. This is Schubert, which is a beautiful ink, but more green for sure than Meet Me in St. Louis. So it's not like a, this isn't really a full-on tealy turquoise. Uh, it's got uh, definitely more blue than that. Uh, and then this is just a straight up very dark blue, super dark one. Um, I'm not going to try to say that one. Deep Din Water Blau? Maybe. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try that one again for a while. Here's another Ackerman. This is a Dutch Masters uh, Vermeer, Cobalt Blue, and then Robert Oster's Blue Denim next to that. Uh, this one is like it looks a little bit closer uh, on my camera than it does here. We'll see how the final video comes out, but this is definitely greener than this. Blue Denim is actually kind of close. Uh, in character to uh, Meet Me in St. Louis. So if you miss out on Meet Me in St. Louis, maybe check out Robert Oster's Blue Denim. They both, both got that same kind of color going on. And then the last two, uh, this is Noodler's Steel Blue, which is a very close look, a very close cousin here perhaps. 
And then uh, Irishizuku Sukiyo, which is kind of a blue-black. A slightly greenish blue-black, but not, not terribly green. This one's definitely the greenest of the bunch. This one's a blue-black, and this one's just a very dark blue, uh, which is, I think, very cool. But also very, very close. You can find blue steel at uh, Drom Ghouls. I believe that's one of their um, one of their uh, their exclusives. So you can check that out at Drom Ghouls. All right. So that wraps up my... Uh, a little review here of KWZ's Meet Me in St. Louis. Thank you again to Ken for sending this out for a review. Uh, this is very interesting ink to play with. Uh, just keep away from water because this is one of the weaker water resistances that I've seen in a while. So uh, I'm not sure where to tell you to get this other than go to the St. Louis Pin Show. Sometimes there's leftovers and they end up going home with uh, Anderson's or Van Ness or somebody like that. But you never know with these. So uh, hopefully you can get to the show or get somebody to mule you some of this stuff. And I will see you all later. Peace out.